That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Kaya and today we are finally taking our deep dive into the Norwegian black metal band Immortal. The time has come, this band won a poll of ours quite a bit ago and I'm finally getting around to it. We have three songs today. I'm really excited. This is the first like true black metal band that we have had on the channel like full corpse paint and everything. So I don't really know what to expect. I've heard a few things on my Discord about production and how it's kind of the thing for black metal for it to sound as like tool sheddy garage like bad recording as possible. So we'll see what that actually means, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. Okay? Don't don't judge me yet. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. I post weekly videos documenting my metal journey as a brand new metalhead as I discover metal for the first time. So if that sounds interesting to you, then subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified when I post. You can also join my Discord, the Mosh Pit. There is an invite link down below in the description and my PO box is down there also if you want to send something to be featured in our monthly unboxing videos. Also, it is Thrash Giving time. So in honor of it being Thanksgiving, I am hosting a fundraiser to raise money to a local charity here in North Carolina. It is called Brother Wolf Animal Shelter or Brother Wolf Animal Rescue. <laughs> Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is a no-kill animal shelter that works to save the lives of as many animals as possible in the western North Carolina region. Each year, Brother Wolf saves around 9,000 animals thanks to kind community-based donations as they receive no government funding. To Brother Wolf, being a no-kill animal shelter means to do the absolute best to ensure a live outcome. They consider the animal's quality of life, community safety, and whether it's realistic to manage aggressive or difficult behaviors or health conditions in a home without risk to people or other animals. North Carolina is actually one of the worst states in the U.S. for the euthanization of sheltered animals, according to a national study. You can donate now to help Brother Wolf Animal Shelter in their mission to save as many animals as possible and help someone in the North Carolina region find their new best furry friend. All right, are we ready to dive into Immortal? Because I am. <laughs> the first song we are going to listen to is called where light and dark don't differ and this i believe is off of their 1999 record at the heart of winter oh my god it was so loud the drums the percussion work and the drums sound so fire nasty in this love it the double bass sounds perfectly like mic'd layered in this also mixed in with the, the cymbal taps they're just like oh it's leveled perfectly in this mix and I like this intro so far it's slapping hard I don't know if this is a remix or not this is just from straight from their YouTube channel but this, 
I like it so far. just kind of do like I don't know it was like a little dip super nice his vocals are so ribbity like <laughs> like so up uh, makes me want to clear my throat but I like it I don't give me I like it it's just so it's different it's super ribbity I like the the layer that they do too because they have like a lower one or some sort of like harmony it's not quite a double on this side and then the main one obviously here but it's nice that it's there and I also like the quick one beat stops that they have in these verses too just a great way to kind of like break it up it's not super jolting it just kind of goes but you like notice it you're like oh, okay <laughs> and then we're good and then we continue I do like it super in the pocket uh, it's giving me like a mama Marth meets like mega death the Iron Maiden type. This is a longer song. That's kind of what I'm getting instrumentally wise. Also with the album cover, it's giving me a monomarth for sure. But the vocals are, are definitely something that is something we haven't, it, it just is new. It's a new sound to the channel. Um, doesn't sound very tool shedy to me so far. This is a pretty good, great sounding record so far.
hear that right before we got into this section? It was like... It wasn't gongy. It, was, it didn't sound like a gong, but it had the same type of impact as a gong. That was interesting. This drummer is fire. This I love the way that his kit is mic'd on this record. It's so, like, oh, it's delicious. Perfect song already. I am here for Immortal. I'm here for this song. I love it. I love that this is just, it's just, I can't believe it's not butter, you know? It's buttery, girl. I like it. Uh, the kit, I already mentioned, super great. They're playing around with these, like, little symbols. His cymbal taps, mic'd perfectly. They're delicious, and they keep switching where they're panning based on which verse we're in. Um, and these, like, fills in this part just before the gongy sound. It was kind of like eight measures or something like that of that, but his, like, drum fills that he was doing, like, kind of going down the kit were so nice and just, like, kept sweeping this way through the headphones. Before that section, we had a little, like, bridge sort of thing, and he had little da 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 da, -da fills, and they played around with the pan, so it was like here, 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 and then they, actually, the fourth one, they just kept it center. Nice little way to, like, play around with it. Dope track already. like I think he and then he grabs the symbol so it doesn't ring out too much but it's nice oh. that his vocals are insane I'm just gonna make sure my neighbor didn't text me my my car battery died the other day side side note my car battery died the other day I learned how to swap it and I learned how to properly jump a car did you know that my car battery was in there for eight years since 2014 I got the car in 2018 she lasted eight years blew my neighbor's mind <laughs> okay but he hasn't texted me sorry side rant not even a rant <laughs> uh, I'm here for it this is I'm liking this song already boom she's been liked love it already love the song his voice I just want him to just give me one just give me one rivet I like it. It's so like, ugh. like I mentioned that a couple times where they, Morbid Angel has a song too. I think where he does sort of that like, groany like ugh, type, spoken word. This one, super, super groany. For sure. But I like it. It fits with the song, and I just love that they like. It was more instrumental than it was vocals, and his vocals were very simple in terms of the song. So it wasn't a lot of screaming, not a lot of like grunts, just very simple. And they really let 
the guitar riffs and the drums just like basically have at it and speak for itself. So uh, definitely like this. So this came out in 99. So same time as Still Life. And wow, my face looks so, you see that movie Smile yet? Sorry, didn't mean to creep you out. <laughs> um, and Slipknot self-titled record, so this is when it came out, all right. No notes, that's okay, we don't need notes. What are your thoughts on this record? I had a lot of people say um, this record was pretty dope nasty. Composer, Abbath Doom Occulta, synthesizer, vocals, bass, Abbath Doom Occulta. Oh, he's just doing everything. Oh, he looks mean, but also dope. Born in Oda. In 1973, known by his stage name, Ol oh, Olva Ikemo? Known by his stage name is Abbot Doom Occulta. Is a Norwegian musician best known for guitarist, vocalist for the black metal band Abbot, and former guitarist, vocalist, and founding member oh, of Immortal. That's right, y'all said there were like a connection. There was a connection between Abbot. Oh, and Immortal. Oh, so Abbath literally is his band, and his stage name is Abbath Doom Occulta, and he also formed Immortal. Whoa, it all comes together. What do you think about Abbath? Was it, did I hear that Abbath was strange? The Abbot Doom Occulta, the dude, Olva, that he was kind of strange? Or am I just like farting in the wind here? I don't know. Written by Abbot. Lyricized by Demon D Demones. Horg. This dude. Uh, Horg. You are a master, <laughs> master at this drum stuff. So it says that Abbot did... Composed it, did guitars for it, vocalized it, and synthesizer. And then Peter, this dude Peter. Swedish musician and multi inch Wow, he looks cool. He kind of looks like Johnny Depp, but like black metal. You know? They worked with Sabaton, Linder, Lindman. I've heard of Sabaton. Swedish musician, multi-instrumentalist, and producer. He is the founder, main songwriter, lead vocalist, and guitarist of the death metal band Hypocrisy, as well as the industrial metal band Pain, in which he is the only member. He is also the owner of the Abyss Recording Studio. Wow. So you're in Hypocrisy, but also helped... Produce Sabaton and Lindman and Immortal. Nice. What a track record. All right, I'm here for it. That's dope. Dope nasty. Next song we've got Beyond the North Waves. This is from Sons of Northern Darkness from 2002. <laughs> Oh, just hit me that there are three Ps. Okay, that makes more sense with Abbott being vocalist, guitarist, synthesizer. Does he have like a separate keyboard that's like next to him then? And then we have one dude on bass and then one dude on drums. So Abbott kind of just does everything in Immortal like he does in Abbott. Sorry, I know he paused it early, but that just hit me. <laughs> Oh, 
nasty, nasty. This groove of the whole song is just such a pocket of just, oh, we are in like such a groove. This is such a vibe. I'm already liking this song. I love it. I love in the pocket, like delicious kind of slow, juicy riff songs like this. This is, makes me want to drive 80 on the highway with the windows down and my bloodhound slobber just flopping in the wind. You ever seen a bloodhound with his face out the window on a highway? It's scary. We're talking like all the teeth, his eyes doing this, ears flopping in the wind. Now imagine that with this song playing. with all of this fire this is a bop track a bop and a half i'm here for it also the photo that they have for this record do they paint their arms then white because it looks like abbott the lead singer does he do like black and white and kind of just like smear it on his arms what's the sitch i was also giving like uh what is it, Dimu Bogir-esque for the costume? Obviously, like, as a newbie to metal, it's giving me Kiss vibes, but it's not really Kisses. I guess you could kind of compare Kiss to Immortal, but obviously just completely different sound. But I love this track so far.
this section of this halftime kind of I, I'm assuming it's kind of like a slam breakdown section here also really interesting that they have a deeper spoken word like they just dropped his voice down an octave for this section interesting 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 also obvious that they used a synthesizer keyboard based on like the notes. Um, I would be interested to know if they use like an actual choir for their shows, but probably not. But I love a good real choir. Synthesizers are all right. Synthesizer choirs, although you can get a pretty decent one nowadays, but that's a lot of money. slam section they build it back up so perfectly back into that same drum pattern and the same riff that they had at the beginning but the difference was is that the melody that he was doing that little riff he added just more to it so more strokes and just filled in more space so it wasn't just the same -na 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 type thing which is really nice. It's a nice way to kind of do the same thing, but just tweak it a little bit. Also really good to finish off the song. That was a dope track. Dope track, Beyond the North Waves. I also love that um, they had the water noises. It didn't hit until the end, I will be honest, that they had water noises. That and that is because it was called Beyond the North Waves. That totally went over my head. You know? <laughs> We're on it. It's all good. So this is an unreviewed annotation, but it says Beyond the North Waves is told from the perspective of a Viking of his raids and voyages and battles. On seas against the open, we traveled on and on. Through the raging winds and storms, we arrived. The shadowing voices of our gods singing on the calling wind, where the cold waves and longboats brought us far. With sword in hand, I now stand on my enemy's land, and my northern heart I will fight until the day I die, die. The Vikings were scavengers who lived on raids. They made their living by invading the lands of others. Oh, no wonder uh, Toad is such a jerk sometimes. Oh. 
blackened thrash metal, thrash metal, extreme metal. All right. Abbott did bass on this too. Do they have a bass player then? I'm so confused. Demonaz, Demonaz. Vocalist, guitarist, and chief lyricist. Uh, ooh, look at you. Inspiration for my next corpse paint video. Laudy. Best known as a vocalist, guitarist, and chief lyricist of the black metal band Immortal. Wait, he's a vocalist in here? The vocalist. Demonaz. So he's done self titled stuff. So I'm just assuming he's another vocalist. And then who's. Don't tell me Mr. Horg has like eight other jobs in this band too. I don't understand the dynamic of what we're dealing with here. Who does bass, who does drums, and does Sabbath do everything else? That's what we need to know. There's nothing on Horg. Looks like Horg's only done Immortal. Oh no, hypocrisy. Okay, so he... Interesting. So Horg, the drummer for Immortal, is also in Hypocrisy, which is what the producer, who is, I think, also doing this record and also did Where the Light and Dark Don't Differ, he's also in Hypocrisy, right? That was what we decided? That was what we figured out? Oh, that's interesting. So are they all, like, in a band together, except for Abbott? Because Abbott decided to go do his own thing. Ooh, it looks like he's just strictly immortal and hypocrisy. All right. Yeah, it was Peter, founder and main songwriter, yeah, 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 for hypocrisy. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure Peter, like, got into the studio with Horg the first time and was like, yo, bro, I'm stealing you for my band. You need a job? You want to join a band? Okay, and then they recorded it at Abyss, which is his thing. All right, I'm guessing, I don't know. I don't know what the dynamic is. Tell me, y'all tell me, y'all tell me what the deal is. Next track and our final song for the video, we have As the Eternity Opens. And this one is from Pure Holocaust, I believe. Yeah, As the Eternity Opens from their 93 record, Pure Holocaust. difference with this song in terms of production uh it's so much roomier than the last two records um even though this is from 93 like it's so it's just so much space around the drums so much reverb on his voice and the guitars are so like far away Whereas everything was very, very balanced in the first song and the second record that we listened to. But this is just, it's not bad by any means. It's just, uh, different. <laughs> Get 
Tripping on the concrete, girl. Um, <coughs> hey, hey. Uh -uh, none of that. Coda. Hush. Coda. No barking. Uh uh. Lay down. <sighs> Puppy. It's like you take a stick and you like break it against your knee. That's what it sounds like. Uh, I think that this like little, the drum section here is a nice bop. I'm not feeling this one as much as the last two. But I think it's because of the actual production of the song. However, I think this is what my Discord meant by like tool sheddy. Is this kind of like the vibe of like most black metal? Um, it's just so much space around everything and it's like I really want to hear all of the notes of these like guitar riffs and stuff like that because I feel like they're just bleeding together so it's not really vibing with me. There's not a lot of changes with the main guitar riff either um, which I guess in retrospect there weren't really with the first song but that just the drums were carrying the first song. 
So. <laughs> drummer like sitting back as he's like completing and his feet like coming off of the pedals and then like obviously the ring of the cymbal little stuff like that I do like uh this choral section not the fizz bad awful don't like it Ugh. I think it's so shardy and just like a wall of sound and he's like it's a synthesizer so He's doing these little, like this little, da -da -da, you know, like two or three keys that he's playing, but there's so much space around them that you are not able to distinguish those note changes at all. So it's just like this massive shardy wall of sound and it's just like bombards you right here and it doesn't, ugh, ugh, did not like that at all. And then it's just gone. <laughs> As the eternity, eternity opens. I have a new producer. So this one is before Peter came around. Any notes on this one at all? Floating evil rain with fear in these sarcastic caves enlightened to a blacker dark for there are views in darkness. The light is searching to save the soul of mine. It's blind, it can't see the gate to immortality. Harness bells, hail my soul, the gate is all I've known as eternity opens. Ooh. Floating evil rain with fear in these sarcastic caves, enlightened into a blacker dark, for there are views in darkness. Oh. For there are views in darkness. So he takes the. The two, in the verse two, he takes those two lines from the chorus. And then that's just the chorus, so he repeats those two lines. I like enlightened into a black or dark, for there are views in darkness. I like that. The light will disappear, it was never here, as the eternity opens. Floating evil rain, fear in these sarcastic caves. Oh, I like the bars. Who's this Pitten guy? He looks cool. Uh, born in 1950. Also known as Pitten. What's his name? Eric Hunvin. Producer and recording engineer for many classic black metal albums, mainly by Norwegian bands such as Burzum, Mayhem, Emperor, nearly all of which were recorded in the Greg Hall in Bergen. So he's done Emperor, who we're going to be doing soon. Sorry, I did the smile thing again. Mayhem, Berserk. Did you do any? Oh, Enslaved. Gargaroth. Uh, Satyricon, you know them? Uh... I mean, that's a great track record. 
I'm so tired of seeing Taylor Swift around these, this. I'm sorry, Spoofy, okay? I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of seeing the number 13. Any comments on this? No comments? Okay, let's see what Immortals got to offer on uh, Metal Archives real quick. Shall we look? I just want to see. Loudy. Drop my dang headphones, girl. I also have a whole cup of new tea, so I want to drink that. Mm. Okay, so it says they're still active, formed by ex members of Amputation and Old Funeral. Euronymous of what does it say? Euronymous of Mayhem is credited for getting Abbott into black metal. Oh, that's a person. Euronymous. Wow, they all have stage names. That's cool. Into black metal, and as a result, Abbott getting Varge Vikerness Burzum into black metal as well. Despite these associations, Immortals' primary members have never been involved in the more controversial activities of some of their contemporaries in the second wave of black metal. That's right! Hold on. That is so right. There's like a whole... Let me see what's in my Discord. Hold on. Um, ja. Ja, ja. I'm going back to our thing on Discord, Mr. Muja. Uh, let's see. So there was something about mayhem that he said the these days the black metal scene is doing its best to cover up and distance themselves from a few uncomfortable aspects of their past but old muja never forgets so it says mayhem was a racist band people like to act like just National Socialist Black Metal is the problem with black metal, but really a large part of black metal's foundational acts were outright racial, nationalist, or national socialists. Dark Throne, Berserk, Mayhem, Gorgoroth, all of them have problems with this. However, because some of those big names are foundational black metal acts that are responsible for it being popular in the first place, people largely excuse or outright ignore the problems they have and just paint NSBM as a problem. Oh. Okay, so we have issues with Barge from Berserm. What are your thoughts? I'm just kind of like, I don't want to stir up too much because YouTube be sensitive these days, okay? People be sensitive, you can't say a lot of things. So I'm going to just keep it, you know, kosher, but looks like there's some problems with this Mr. Varge Vikerness. Uh, yeah, kind of a small history lesson, but what's immortal in all of this? Because it seems like Dark Throne, Berserm, Gorgoroth, and Mayhem have some issues, have a dark past, but you know... Everybody has a dark past. Um, Emperor has problems too. All right, we're keeping it down the list. Um, you know, it's really just about the music at the end of the day. You know, it's like Kanye. You know, it's like Kanye. Is that a sensitive topic too? I don't know. Before I get too deep into the rabbit hole, we're just going to stick with Immortal. <laughs> what is Immortal and their history? Like... Do they have a controversial history as well? Are they similar to like Mayhem 
uh, and burn serum, go growth and stuff like that, or are they just their own thing? I also would assume that they wouldn't be. They're signed to Nuclear Blast. Like the first two songs we listened to were both, I think, signed off of Nuclear Blast. So I would be very surprised if Nuclear Blast would, I mean, if they were so controversial, if they would sign them for that. Um, I think they were. Battles of the North, I think, were. No, that was with Osmos. Sorry, I gave you false information. Um, and then At the Heart of Winter was also with Osmos. So, they're still active. So, I guess, yeah, then if they do have a controversial history, then maybe Osmos doesn't care. But now they're worth Nuclear Blast. Like, I know... Sons of Northern Darkness was with Nuclear Blast. So, I don't know. Um, I just also find it, just as, like, somebody who's first listening to Immortal as a baby metalhead, I find it interesting that people, like, a band... I don't know if Mayhem is the same sort of vibe. I mean, let's see. As Immortal. I'm not gonna say that... Okay, yeah, then Mayhem looks like they would have the same... Oh, that's the dude. So, okay, so they're not as... Okay, so th th this is a little bit of a different vibe than... Ooh, yeah, looking like trouble. That's what you're looking like. Looking like trouble, okay? So definitely a different vibe than Immortal because I was going to say as somebody that's like on the outside looking into this for the first time, like it's hard to picture these boys being controversial, if you know what I mean, in that way, especially with the spikes and these shin things like this is very like, I don't know. Not cartoony is the wrong word, but it's like Kiss being controversial in that way, if that makes sense. Am I making any sense? I'm trying to be kosher, you know, because I know that this is, I don't know. I don't know these things. I just know that they're, is it immortal? Like you have to tell me what, it, what's the stitch with immortal. Are they like their brethren's or not? Um, cause that is something that would be interesting to the history of black metal. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for the video. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my reaction into Immortal. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on Immortal. What's the history, the backstory? Do you like their stuff? Do you not like their stuff? Um, what's your favorite record, your least favorite record, and have you seen them live? Is that an experience? I want to know what the, the, like, there's a word, it starts with a D. I, it's escaping me. I want to know what the sitch is with the band members, who plays what. What does Abbott actually do on stage? Because he does, it seems like it's like a one-man project except for, like, vocals and extra guitar and drums so I, I don't know how he does on stage if they just have like some dude playing bass there or if he does I'm assuming Abbott sings plays guitar and has a synthesizer keyboard that he does like stuff while he's like looping some riff or something and then they have some stand-in bass player when they play live but let me know what that stitch is as far as their music goes i really really liked battles in the north and no i'm sorry i liked at the heart of winter and sons of northern darkness i liked the two songs we listened to off of that record definitely the best production by far oh my gosh the drummer, Hor Hugh, whatever his name is, he's a solid drummer. And I feel like I want to take a deeper dive into At the Heart of Winter because 
This record is beautiful in terms of production. It's well balanced. The drums have so much room. They're mic'd perfectly. The cymbal taps are perfect. And I definitely think where the dark and light don't differ is the strongest song out of the three. Um, and I think his vocals really shine in there. I think that the, the whole song shines really well. I really disliked the production in their 93 record, Pure Holocaust. I think that that's just awful production in my personal opinion. Um, it's probably like very classic and true to old black metal maybe, or maybe not, I don't know. I've heard mixed things where it's like if it's super well produced and stuff and well mixed and mastered, then it's just bad black metal. But what are your thoughts? Because I just didn't like how much room everything had. I felt like it was all so muddy, especially the choral part was so muddy. It just was like a wall of sound and not in a good way in my personal opinion. So let me know what your thoughts are. I would be curious to know. As usual, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please feel free to join our community. I post weekly videos, like I said, documenting my whole metal journey as a new metal head. Um, also, like and subscribe. I think I already said subscribe, but you can like this video, share it with a friend. Let me know your, your comments down below. Join my Discord, the Mosh Pit in by link is in the description and my p.o box is also there if you want to send something to be featured in one of our metal unboxing videos um that's gonna be it so we got thanksgiving coming up next week i hope y'all are prepared i am prepared i got some money videos all right y'all are not even ready so Go check out more information on my charity fundraiser for uh, Brother Wolf Animal Rescue as well, if you're interested. Just go peruse the animals that they have up for adoption. If you wanna feel your heart melt, you can do that. <laughs> so we got a goal of 666. The uh, fundraiser ends on the 30th of November. So if you feel inclined to donate, you certainly don't have to, but if you feel generous and you wanna help this charity out, then please feel free to. I know that it would mean so much to them, it would mean so much to me, and it would mean so much to the animals that they have there. So I will see you soon, wherever you are, and whenever you're watching this, please take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, babes. Gretchen, stop trying to make that chat.